Hi, my name is Emily Weber and I'm a machine learning specialist at Amazon Web Services. And today we're gonna learn about deep learning frameworks, right? So MXNet, PyTorch, TensorFlow, Chainer, all the fun ways that you can write your own models and import models from the open source world. And we're gonna run those on Amazon SageMaker. This is your deep dive. So quick recap, there are five ways that you can train models on SageMaker, right? So in no way uh, is it only using the built-in algorithms, right? There's a ton of flexibility here. Uh, first, you have algorithms off the shelf, right? Those are those 17 built-in algorithms that come uh, as is. The second way that you can run models on Amazon SageMaker is by putting your code in a Docker file, right? So that's actually bringing your own Docker file putting your code inside that Docker file and then registering that on ECR. Another way that you can train models on SageMaker is using script mode. And that is the one we're gonna be talking about here. So in order to understand script mode, we need to understand a managed container, right? So if we're from the data science world, we've heard the word container, we've certainly heard the word Docker, and maybe we or someone else on our team has some experience doing something with a Docker file. Um, but all we need to know here is that Docker is in the works, right? It is a Docker container. Second, uh, we're gonna think about them in terms of which framework we're using. So which language we're gonna use to actually write our own model. Um, so you've got TensorFlow, you've got MXNet, you've got PyTorch, Chainer, Scikit-Learn, and Apache Spark and Spark ML. And so for all of those six frameworks, there is a managed container that can support code written in one of those frameworks. Right, so as long as you're in one of those frameworks, you've got a managed container. Now, how does a managed container work? Uh, so first off, Docker is behind the scenes, right? Docker is making all this happen. Uh, you're gonna plug into that managed container your Python script, right? Or other script, right? As long as it, as long as it fits the frameworks. Uh, but so you'll bring your script and you'll bring your, your data that's gonna need to live in that S3 bucket. Uh, and that process is gonna train, right? That's gonna train your model. And then the results are gonna come out and they're gonna go back to S3. And so what's the difference here, right? Well, what's the, what's the management that's going on here? What, what's under the hood? So the reality is that there's a lot that you can do with a managed container with not having to write a lot of the code. So once you're going with a managed container, uh, you can use that for endpoints, you can use it for batch transform jobs, you can use it for inference pipelines, and you do not have to bring your own inference code you do not have to bring your own web server and you do not have to bring your own Docker file, right? All of those are managed for you. So that means you can really just focus on your script. You can just think about your model, but that you can run in script mode in order to get access to an inference code set that's managed by SageMaker or a web server or a Docker file. And so another key feature here that we wanna learn about is called local mode. And so what is local mode? So local mode is the fact that as long as you've got your content sitting in a Docker file, you can run this anywhere, right? So this means you actually don't even have to run this on a SageMaker notebook instance to develop, right? When you're developing, when you're iteratively developing a model, it is really, really helpful to be able to guess and check, right? To write a couple lines and then test it to make sure that it's working out really well. No one wants to sit there and wait for three minutes while their training job is coming up online if all they're trying to do is test out if their Keras model is working, right? So with local mode, as long as you have the AWS CLI plus Boto3 plus the SageMaker Python SDK plus your access and seeker keys, you can run local mode in any location, right? And so that means um, that you can develop your custom algorithm locally. So you can develop it literally on your laptop. You can develop it on servers. You can develop it on your SageMaker notebook instance. And then you can scale it uh, by sending it up to SageMaker. And so local mode is a really nice way that you can move very, very quickly in order to develop your model, right? But then once you've developed it, you can push it all the way up to the cloud in order to scale it out. And so with that, let's check out an example. So over here, uh, this is a SageMaker notebook instance. Uh, right, you've got that, that SageMaker uh, location up here. We're in US East 1. Uh, and this is coming from the Python SDK uh, example file. 
So let's check this out. So this is a pretty vanilla uh, uh, scikit-learn example, right? Scikit-learn. Uh, here we go, SageMaker session, execution role, uh, all the good stuff, right? We've got our data sets. This is just the Iris data set. Um, so pretty standard uh, working directory. It's being set to, to data. Uh, so here, we're actually going to have a script, right? There's actually a Python script. Let me show you the Python script. That Python script is right over here, right? So it's going to start right here, right? When the script is executed, that's the, the entry point. Uh, we're going to add some arg parsers. Those are our hyperparameters, right? We're going to read our input files. That's what that guy's doing. That's just making sure those input files are there. Uh, then we're going to generate, right? That raw, raw data read. And so that's looping through our files in the case that someone was doing this with more than one set of files. Uh, we're gonna turn each of those into a data frame. We've got a list of data frames, then we're gonna concat those, right? So now we've got one, one larger data frame that's where, where they've been concatted. Uh, in this case, we're gonna use a scikit-learn model. Uh, we're gonna use a scikit-learn model that's called decision trees. Uh, it's a decision tree classifier. And so that's gonna need us to separate out our Ys and our Xs, right? So we've got our, our train X and train Y. Uh, we've got our max leaf nodes down here. Right? That's a hyperparameter. Uh, then we're going to call model.fit, right? And that happens right here. So that decision tree classifier, you will note, has been imported up here, right? We imported from scikit-learn the decision tree. And we're doing all of this without touching a Docker file, right? We're not even thinking about Docker and we're not even thinking about ECR. We just get to focus on our script. And that's why it's called script mode. Uh, so we've got our decision tree classifier. And that's the, the CLF, right? That's our classifier. We're gonna call clf.fit. And then we'll, we'll dump that job. Great. And so that's the script. And then check this out. Uh, so sagemaker.scikit-learn.estimator, right? And so that is a scikit-learn estimator, right? And so again, that's a managed container uh, that is managed by AWS that we're just leveraging in order to run our script. And so we're gonna to point to our script here. A couple pieces I want you to really see. Um, so typically, when you look at an estimator, you'll see it looking something like this, right? You'll have um, your train instance type, right? And you've got your SageMaker session. Uh, what I want you to do is comment out the SageMaker session, right? So don't even pass it up. Don't pass in a SageMaker session. It, it'll, it'll just break the process. Then over here, on your train instance type, pass in local. And so what's happening is that that scikit-learn model is literally training, right? That's literally training. And so down here, we're gonna call scikit-learn.fit with our input data, and then there's the readout, right? That's telling you um, all the steps that are happening, right, the number of CPUs, there we go. Okay, reporting training success, there we go. And what's cool is we can also do inference locally. Uh, so if you're one of those folks like me who doesn't necessarily like to write inference code, you like to use inference code that's written for you, uh, over here we'll do scikit-learn.deploy, right? And then we're still just gonna switch out instance type to local. So there we go. So that is a local deployment that's going on. Okay, and then lastly, we're gonna get some data set. Right, so we've got our test values and we'll shoot that up against our local predictor. And there we go. Uh, so some pro tips, right? Just, just to remember, there are six different managed containers that you can leverage. And for all of those six different containers, you do not have to install the base version of whatever software you're trying to use, right? You don't have to install TensorFlow. You don't have to install MXNet. You don't have to install um, Chainer, Scikit-Learn, right? All that is there in the managed container. You don't have to bring your inference code. You don't have to bring your web server. All that just comes off the shelf. So you just wanna pick one of those six. Um, I highly recommend customers using an example notebook. It can be really frustrating when you think something is gonna work and you spend you know, four plus hours going down a rabbit hole when suddenly you realize that you didn't configure something correctly right up front. So when you pick an example notebook that works out of the box, 
modify that using your code, and then you've got a much higher assurance that that dev time is gonna be worth it in the end. Uh, also, pro tip, right, definitely check out local mode. If you are thinking, you know, hey, I wanna save time to, to develop my models, definitely explore local mode. And the last thing you wanna know about is requirements.txt. So when you're training a model, um, frequently there are many sub uh, packages that you also need, right? So NLTK, all these other good things, you can pass that in as a requirements.txt file, and then uh, SageMaker will install that within that managed container, right? It'll pip install based on your requirements. So with that, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Emily Weber. I'm a machine learning specialist at Amazon Web Services, and I hope you enjoyed uh, our video on the deep learning frameworks. Have a great day.